My name is Dr. Christina Kenny. I'm a professor at the University of California, Irvine. I welcome you to our video where we're going to talk in more detail about the relationship between ethnicity and the severity of COVID-19 disease and the responses to medications. My research focuses on mitochondria and their role in human disease. My laboratory is a leader in studying these aspects of mitochondria. But the most recent project investigates the role of mitochondria in the severity and response to treatment of COVID-19. This represents the outline of what you're going to learn today. Number one, what are mitochondria and why are they important? Number two, I'm going to describe classifications of mitochondrial DNA, which are also called haplogroups, in different ethnic populations. Then I will review the impact of COVID-19 on minority populations. I will then describe our unique panel of cybris, which represent different ethnic populations, and then I will summarize the importance of our work. Now, what are mitochondria and why are they important? If you look at this slide at the upper portion, you'll see a flashlight with batteries. You can buy a very expensive flashlight, but if you don't have the $10 batteries, the flashlight's not going to work. The same thing happens with all of the cells in your body. If you don't have healthy mitochondria, you're not going to have normal function. In this slide, it shows a, an example of a retina, but this is also true for heart cells, for brain cells, liver cells, all the cells in your body, we, they all require healthy mitochondria to have normal function. This represents a schematic or diagram of a cell. In this area is the nucleus, and the nucleus contains nuclear DNA. But within every cell in our body, there are numerous mitochondria. The mitochondria are the packets that provide energy for the cell. And what many of you may not realize is the mitochondria have their own DNA itself. The D this DNA is inherited from the mother and it's small and circular. So any cell can have hundreds of mitochondria depending upon how metabolically active the cell is. And within each mitochondria, there's one to 10 copies of mitochondrial DNA. Now the mitochondria have numerous important functions. The function that we've known about the longest is energy production. This is how we, every cell in our body gets energy. It's from the mitochondria. But in addition, they play a very important function of producing free radicals, which are, can act as signaling molecules, but in, if we have too many free radicals, they can be damaging. Another important function has to do with something called apoptosis, or cell death. And finally, what we've been studying in great detail is the, what's called the retrograde signaling, which is the signaling from mitochondria back to the nucleus to regulate certain very important pathways. Every cell in your body has two types of DNA. You have your nuclear DNA, and your mitochondrial DNA. The nuclear DNA, you get half from your mother, half from your father. It forms the double helix that we all learned about in school, and it codes for 20 to 25,000 genes. But the second kind of DNA in all the cells is the mitochondrial DNA. You inherit it only from your mother, it's circular, and it codes for 37 genes, but it's very, very important because the nuclear DNA is influenced by the mitochondrial DNA. Mitochondrial DNA over tens of thousands of years have had changes and these changes are in the single nucleotide polymorphisms. They're called SNPs and they have accumulated in the mitochondrial DNA over tens of thousands of years. But they're very important because they're associated with specific geographic regions. So everybody can be classified
by their ancestral mitochondrial haplogroups. And these haplogroups have been used to study human migration patterns. This slide is an example of the haplogroup patterns. The oldest haplogroups are found in Africa, and they are 130 to 170,000 years. But as populations migrated, there were populations that moved to Europe, there were populations that moved to uh, Asia, and there were populations in the Mara Indians, the New Americas. Every population, over time, in response to their environment, the SNPs within the mitochondrial DNA have changed, so they represent that population. So I can find somebody in Southern California, isolate their blood, look at their mitochondrial DNA, and I can trace out their maternal lineage to Asia, Europe, or Africa. So in summary, for the mitochondrial DNA haplogroups, every individual can be classified through their mitochondrial DNA. And they represent populations of origin. And the reason this is important is because when you have different patterns of your mitochondrial DNA, then those patterns can result in amino acid changes that can affect how the mitochondria behave. The mitochondrial haplogroups that represent the different ethnic populations may be very important because as we are seeing reported with the COVID-19, the African Americans may be more susceptible to COVID-19, have more severe disease, and dying at higher rates. It is really felt that better data is essential for us to understand why this may be happening. And so we hypothesize that mitochondria play a vital role in disease and death from infections such as COVID-19. The uniqueness of the mitochondria from different ethnic populations may explain the severity of some diseases in populations, whereas other people don't get such serious disease, and also may help us understand how some populations respond better to treatments while others don't. So my research has two goals. The first is we will determine which promising experimental treatment for COVID-19 patients are most likely to benefit which ethnic population and with which age group. We will also determine the role of mitochondria in susceptibility to severity of COVID-19 disease and susceptibility to death for the different ethnic populations. This slide represents the mitochondrial DNA haplogroup map. You can see that each of these haplogroups are represented by different letters, and they represent the haplogroup from the African population, from the European populations, from the Asian populations, and the Mara Indian populations. We believe that the, the COVID virus has a different effect on the different populations, in part because of these different mitochondrial DNA haplogroups. And we will be testing whether the COVID virus and the haplogroups, if those interactions can affect the severity of the disease and the response to medication. We will be using a specialized uh, panel and model that we have developed in our laboratory. We have cell lines, they're called cybrids, all the cell lines have identical nuclei, but the, each cell line has mitochondria representing people from Europe, or the Mara Indians, or the African, maternal African, or the maternal Asian populations. When you have these cell lines, then all the influence if, is because of the differences in the mitochondrial DNA. So if we have a cell line from a European population versus an African population, and they behave differently, all the nuclei are the same. So the only differences are because of the mitochondria. So in using these specialized cybrid cell lines 
as a model, we can treat these cybrid panels with potential COVID drugs and measure their responses. And that allows us to identify which drug is most effective in each group. We will also correlate the severity and outcome of the COVID virus in a patient to their mitochondrial DNA haplogroup. We will work with the clinical studies in a retrospective observational study. We will collect biological samples and look at their mitochondrial DNA. And once we've identified what haplogroup that individual is, we will then correlate that data with the patient medical history. And this will allow us to determine if there's association between the outcome and the mitochondrial DNA. This valuable information will give us new possible treatment options for treating uh, the patient based on ethnicity. So our mitochondrial research will have a tremendous impact on survival from COVID-19 because it will provide information on the effectiveness of new experimental drugs on different patients and will help doctors choose the right therapy for patients based on their ethnicity. Our mitochondrial research will have a tremendous impact on survival from COVID-19 because it will provide information on the effectiveness of new experimental drugs on different patients. It will help doctors choose the right therapy for patients based on their ethnicity. We want to thank the Discovery Eye Foundation, which is a nonprofit 501c3, and an organization dedicated to help us find treatments and cures for different human diseases. If you'd like more information, go to www.discoveryeye.org. And we'd also like to thank all the researchers, all the patients, and all the people that have supported this very, very important research that helps us find cures for COVID virus. Thank you very much for the participants and the financial supporters because you've really made a difference.